Well, hockey fans, it's the two greatest words in sports. Game 7, that is tonight at 7 p.m. The Oilers and Canucks, only one can move on. One will be going home golfing. And uh, for the Canucks and Canucks fans, they were actually dealt a huge blow yesterday. It was reported that Brock Besser would not be able to play today due to blood clotting issues. And first and foremost, I just want to say I really hope Brock Besser is okay. Uh, He has been through so much. I know he's the heart and soul uh, for a lot of Canucks fans, and you never want to want to see that even as the opposition I want the Oilers to win you never want to see a player go down like that at the end of the day these are millionaires that shove a rubber disc around on a sheet of ice uh the human aspect is always more important to me in every situation in life So just setting aside the sports area, you know, the sports aspect of this, uh, I truly do hope Brock Besser is going to be okay. I hope he's able to start skating and play hockey very, very soon once he's able to, obviously. Um, And that, that, that is a huge blow. And, you know, for the Canucks, it's been a, it's been a terrific run in the postseason, and I know as an Oilers fan, Vancouver, they are going to rally around Brock Besser. That team in that locker room over there, they are going to rally around him, and they are going to be going all out tonight. They are going to win this for Brock, and as an Oilers fan, and for the Oilers themselves, they have to be ready for that push. They have to be ready for that attack from Vancouver. Um, you know, obviously losing one of your best players in any series is going to uh, lower your chances of winning. However, in a one game sample size like a game seven uh, that's thrown out the window. Long term, maybe, yeah, that would affect Vancouver a lot. But for one game, they might be able to overcome it. And, you know, we're going to discuss a lot in this pregame report. But again, I just wanted to mention, I hope Brock Besser's is OK. Uh, he's one of my favorite players. Uh, he has been instrumental in Vancouver's success up to this point. He had 40 goals in the regular season. And for someone that's been through some of the stuff that he's been through, uh, I truly do feel for him. I feel for Canucks fans. I feel for that organization. So hopefully he's able to recover uh, as quickly as you can from something like that. I'm unfamiliar with how blood clotting issues uh, work, uh, so I have no idea what the possible situation is. However, I will stress that um, uh, sources say that this is not a life-threatening situation, but obviously it is enough where you know to the point where he can't play. So Brock Besser, I'm wishing you all the best. All right, man. All right, so let's get into the projected lineup for the Edmonton Oilers. The series is tied 3-3. Nugent Hopkins, Carr McDavid, and Zach Hyman will be on the top line. Uh, I, by the way, I don't expect any lineup changes for the Oilers unless someone is like really sick or injured that we're unaware of right now. I think they're going with the exact same lineup. Second line, we're going to have Evander Kane, Leon Dreisaitl, and Dylan Holloway. And Dylan Holloway, he looked terrific in Game 6 if he continues to play like he did in Game 6. And then obviously we saw that one game against uh, LA, Game 2, where he had two goals. Uh, Dylan Holloway, this could be a coming out party for him. He looks like he's on the verge of breaking out into the player that I think the team thought that he would be a year or two ago. So for Dylan Holloway, this is really huge in his not only his development, but the coaching staff now has the confidence to keep him in that top six with players like Dreisaitl and Evander Kane. So that's really good to see. Uh, third line will be Warren Fogle, Ryan McLeod, Derek Ryan. Fourth line, I expect it to be Matisse Yanmark, Sam Carrick, and Connor Brown. And then, of course, our three scratches, Adam Henrique, Sam Gagne, Corey Perry. It's already been confirmed that Adam Henrique is a non-option for Game 7. Uh, Sam Gagne is available if, like I said, if there's some kind of you know ridiculous injury or illness that we're unaware of. And then Corey Perry, I don't expect him to play either. Uh, but for Corey Perry, he's a, he's a terrific veteran player. Uh, he understands that this is, uh, you know, it's about the team right now. It's not about him. And uh, obviously, he would probably probably rather be playing. He just hasn't been able to produce much. So I understand why he's been taken out of the lineup here. On defense, we have Matias Ekholm with Evan Bouchard. We have Darnell Nurse with Vinny DeHarnay, Brett Kulak with Cody Cece. And then our two extras are Philip Roberg and Troy Stetcher. Again, they are on standby in case they have to jump in, but I don't expect either of those two to play tonight. Broberg has been taking warm-ups uh, during the pregame warm-ups. I think because Matias Ekholm is the one that's been pretty sick for Edmonton, he played the least amount of minutes among Oilers defensemen the other night in Game 6. So uh, I don't expect Ekholm to come out of the lineup. The Viking is an absolute monster out there, but Philip Broberg is... Is ready if he has to be and then Stuart Skinner I do imagine will get the start tonight he didn't have to make a lot of saves in game six but some of the saves that he did make there was one specific one on Hughes when it was 3-1 uh through traffic he got his blocker on it 
That was massive. And for Stuart Skinner, hopefully, even though he didn't face a lot of rubber in game six, hopefully there was enough there to get his psyche uh, back in a positive mindset. And he's able to carry some momentum into game seven for the Oilers. Now, when we look at the pregame numbers, uh, expected goals for for the Oilers at five on five, it's at 49.67%. They are a little bit below 50%, which ranks ninth in the entire postseason. Their power play has dipped. It has It is coming back down to earth. It's at 36.8%, which still ranks first in the NHL. Their penalty kill has been lights out. It's been very good. It's at 90.6%, which also ranks first. And the Oilers scored 3.91 goals per game, also ranks first. Goals against per game has dropped below three. It is now at 2.82. It ranks ninth. Team save percentage at even strength is 88.81%. Or sorry, that's uh, in all situations. Uh, it ranks 10th. And then the Oilers shooting percentage ranks second in the league right now at 13.07%. Looking over on the Vancouver Canucks side, expected goals for at even strength, 51.01%. That's from Natural Statric, by the way. So if you want to check out some of those numbers yourself, go to Natural Statric. Uh, Vancouver's power play, 15.2%, which ranks 12th. Yeah, pen penalty kill has been good for Vancouver, especially the last couple of games. They've held the Oilers to nothing. Uh, so uh, it's at 82.5%, which ranks 6th. They scored 2.58 goals per game, which ranks 10th. The goals against per game, 2.75, which ranks 8th. Um, save, team save percentage, 89.75%, which ranks 7th. And then, of course, team shooting percentage has started to drop just, just a smidge. It's now at 12. 0.25% which ranks third now when it comes to my player to watch tonight I'm going Leon Dreisaitl he's been absolute beast mode in the postseason uh so far and I expect him to continue to play very well Vancouver is going to be trying to line match as hard as they can against Connor McDavid which should possibly open up the door for Leon Dreisaitl uh Vancouver's depth has taken a massive massive hit with the loss of Brock Besser so Leon Dreisaitl he he him and his line have an opportunity uh to jump in and produce the offense while JT Miller I'm assuming will be going up against McDavid and shutting him down so for Dreisaitl expect a big big game from him and then of course my score prediction instead of a score prediction I'm doing like I did the other night and this is actually just following suit with my uh series preview video that I did two weeks ago and in that series preview video all I said was the Oilers would win in seven so my game prediction is an Oilers win no score prediction tonight uh I am holding firm with my uh, pre pre you know my my preview my series preview video uh, I did pick the Oilers in seven I went back and rewatched that video this morning just to see if anything had been kind of accurate in that video I said pretty much every game would be one goal games I didn't think there would be any blowouts obviously we had the one in game six but that's the only one that we've had uh, and I said Vancouver, the way they play, they play extremely disciplined defensive hockey, very tight checking. And I said it would be difficult for Edmonton to come out of the series on top. Uh, so for Edmonton, they they need to play pretty much a perfect game tonight. Even without Brock Besser on the other side, Edmonton has to play a near perfect game. And for the Vancouver Canucks, they have a lot of momentum on their side. They have the home ice crowd advantage and Vancouver's fans are loud they're going to be feeding that team energy all night so for the Oilers they need to get on the Canucks early and try and take that crowd out of it as quickly as they can and weather the storm because the storm is going to be very very difficult to weather for the Oilers uh, but I am going the Oilers with the win I did take them in seven or predict them in seven in my series preview I will stick to that prediction and uh, player to watch Leon Dreisaitl now, friendly reminder, of course, I will be live streaming this game. Once again, the live streams have been so much fun. Uh, so keep an eye out for the live stream tonight at 7 p.m. Mountain, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. I'm very, very excited. And of course, if you liked today's video, make sure you hit like. If you really liked it, make sure you subscribe. If you have not yet subscribed, we uh, recently hit 2,600 subscribers. We are already climbing up to 2,700 subscribers, which is absolutely absurd to me. So I want to thank everyone so much for your support. Canucks fans, you've been amazing. Oilers fans, you've been amazing. And I've had a lot of fans of other teams tuning into videos recently too uh, i just want to thank everyone for your kindness your support uh, it truly means a lot uh of course as always tell someone that you love them before the game tonight and uh we'll see you soon oil country let's go oilers